Pivot tables in Excel are a powerful tool to analyze data quickly and efficiently, especially when you have a large body of data that you want to quickly have an overview of. Let me show you how to make one and how to optimally use one. We're going to work on this data set right here. You can see that we have several columns in this makeshift table. The customer column shows the name of our customers. The product column shows what product this customer has ordered. The type of phone column shows what type of phone they bought the product for. The order ID shows what identifier we've given the customer. The unit sold column shows how many products they have bought from us. And revenue shows how much we've earned from this order. Before we create a pivot table out of this, let's create a conventional table first. You can do that by selecting a cell in your makeshift table, by going to insert in the ribbon and by pressing table. Check if your whole table has been selected and make sure my table has headers is also selected. Press OK and you now have created a table out of your data set. However, you can also create a table by clicking inside of your makeshift table and by hitting Ctrl plus T on your keyboard. You can give it a name as well so that the table is easier to identify. Now that we've done that, you can see that we now have a wonderful looking table, ready to be turned into a pivot table. In order to do that, we have to go to the insert tab in the ribbon. From here, we got two options. The pivot table option allows you to make a pivot table from scratch. And the recommended pivot tables option, which shows you recommendations on what kinds of pivot tables you can use for this data set. But for now, let's make our very own pivot table. Click on Pivot Table. In the new window that appears, make sure that your entire table is selected in the Table or Range settings and make sure New Worksheet is selected for where the new pivot table will be inserted. Click on OK when you're set. You will now be moved to a brand new worksheet with a new sidebar called Pivot Table Fields. At the top, we can find all of the columns we had in our table before. Customer product, type of phone, order ID, unit sold, and revenue. These are now considered fields. Underneath our list of fields, we got different areas where you can drag these fields to. If you drag a field to columns, like the product field for example, the pivot table will add that field as columns. And if you drag a field like customers to the rows area, it will automatically add it as rows. Then when we add units sold to values, for example, the table will now be filled in with the number of units sold for every case per customer. Very cool, right? If we move products over to filters, we can now start filtering the max of units sold to our customers per product. You can in this instance also filter by order ID, type of phone, and more. If we do this with type of phone, we can now filter by either iPhone or other. This is, as you can see, super powerful. And if you'd like to remove a field from an area, just drag it out of the sidebar. It will automatically disappear. Now, if you have revenue selected as a value to be displayed, you might notice that it doesn't really actually look like a currency value. In order to change that, you can right-click inside of a cell in that column and select Number Format. From here, you can choose what number format to use for this column. You got many options, but in this case, we're choosing currency. You can choose the amount of decimal places the numbers will have and what currency the number will be displayed in. Click on OK when you're done. The numbers in this column are now displayed as a proper currency. You can also sort these numbers from high to low or from low to high by right-clicking the column, by hovering over Sort, and by choosing an option here. This way you can quickly see what, for example, your lowest revenue source is and your highest. Something really cool that you can do as well is add a second revenue column in the values field and have that show up as a percentage of the grand total. To do this, right click in the second column and hover over show value as and then select percentage of grand total. And there you go. You can see exactly how much the revenue for a specific product contributed to the grand total revenue. You can also dedicate this column to the average revenue per customer. To do this, right-click inside of the column and go to Summarize Values By. Then select Average. And there you go! You can now see what the average revenue is per customer. Super handy, right? Now let's check out the Pivot Table Analyze tab in the ribbon. From here, we can change the name of the pivot table, change certain settings, 
get to the field settings window, and much, much more. If you ever lose the pivot table field sidebar, you can reactivate it here. And you can also show or hide the plus and minus buttons and the field headers if you'd like. You can also refresh the pivot table from here. This is useful for when you add new data to your table and it needs to show up in your pivot table. It doesn't do this automatically, so you have to click this button every time you make a change to the original dataset. Now, it might have also been the case that you didn't originally select your whole table to be used for the pivot table. But now you want to add some extra lines because they became important. You can do that by selecting Change Data Source and by changing the range. Press OK when you're done. This new data will now be taken into account in your pivot table. Another option that is very cool is the slicers option. With this option, you can turn a specific column into a set of buttons. If we select type of phone, for example, we can now easily choose which kind of phone we want to see the data of. At the top of the slicer window, we can choose to clear these sections again, and we can select multiple as well. Let's have a look at the design tab. From here, you can change options for how subtotals and grand totals are shown. You can even turn them off if you don't want them. You can also change the reporting layout from here and add blank rows into your pivot table. From here, you can also entirely change the style of your pivot table if you'd like. Lastly, do you want a secondary pivot table with the same data set? Simply copy the already existing pivot table and paste it anywhere you like. That way, you already have a foundation to work with, and you can adjust this new pivot table accordingly. And that's how pivot tables work in Excel. Now, I have only scratched the surface of this incredibly cool feature, so it's up to you now to get creative and explore all the other options this feature has to offer you. Good luck!